Hi everyone, my name is Sydney Yeager and I'm the Public Programs Coordinator at the Museum of Jewish Heritage, a living memorial to the Holocaust. Now in its 24th year, the museum is committed to the crucial mission of educating our diverse community about Jewish life and heritage before, during, and after the Holocaust. As part of that mission, our programs are meant to illuminate the stories of survivors, broader histories of hate and anti-Semitism through time, and stories of resistance against injustice. Before we begin, I would like to thank Shanghai Arc for co-presenting today's program. Today, we are honored to be joined by Holocaust survivor, Ernest Glazer. Ernie was born Ernst Adolf Bertolt Glazer on March 2nd, 1924 in Berlin. In 1939, his family left Germany to escape the Nazis and attempted to immigrate to the United States. However, they ended up in Shanghai, China. The Glazers thought they would be in Shanghai for a year at most, but stayed for eight years until 1947 when they left for the United States. There, Ernest and his family settled in San Francisco. Later, he married, raised a family, and became the president of Avocet Food Corporation, a, a subsidiary excuse me, of Smith Klein, which is now GlaxoSmithKline, one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. He has also written a book about his experiences called A Life Well Lived, Berlin, Shanghai, and America. So Ernie will present for about 45 minutes, after which we'll leave time for questions from the audience. So throughout today's program, please feel free to put questions in the Zoom Q&A chat and we will get to as many as we can at the end of the hour. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, now I'm gonna pass things over to Ernie. So I'll go ahead and share my screen again. Thank you, Sydney. And hello, everybody. Uh, I'd like to start the story uh, with my family. Uh, we were typically German Jewish uh, family, middle class family. Uh, and uh, my parents uh, married in 1923. I was born in 1924, uh, just about nine months after they married, uh, which is an amazing uh, story in itself because. Uh, they married at the height of the inflation in Germany. And uh, uh, my father said uh, that the dowry lasted uh, from home to the railway station. I still have a bill uh, from there, just have them having just a, a breakfast. Uh, and uh, it was about $100,000 for one breakfast, I mean, for two breakfasts. Um, I don't want to, I haven't got the time to go into great detail on any of this. Uh, and I uh, uh, will highlight some of the key events in my life and what happened at the time. So uh, let me start with um, uh, just joining kindergarten <coughs> uh, up on top. That picture is Tanta Hana. Uh, it was a, uh, a Jewish uh, environment, and the one below uh, is uh, a, a wedding ceremony, and we made our costumes together out of crepe paper. Uh, and uh, then we, you want to show the next one? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, at age uh, six, uh, this is a picture of... Uh, going uh, to my first class in school. Uh, it was a public school uh, carrying the uh, leather backpack and the tsukka tuta, which is uh, full of chocolate, um, something that I think came out of Jewish tradition originally, but it's very popular in Germany, at least that time it was uh, all over. Um, because uh, it made learning sweet. Uh, next, uh, we uh, moved. This is actually our last uh, abode in Germany. And uh, we lived on the second floor and had a balcony that doesn't show on the left-hand side. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it was uh, already a time uh, when we had a cut back. And I'll get into that a little later. Uh, the uh, next picture, uh, <clears throat> uh, we applied, we had a, uh, 
my mother's brother, in other words, my uncle, uh, had immigrated to the United States in uh, 38. Uh, and uh, he, although he was relatively poor, uh, he had a married, uh, uh, his, his in-laws were uh, relatively wealthy and they took on the uh, necessary guarantee to issue what they call affidavits that uh, we would not become, if we came to, when we came to the United States, we would not become uh, uh, charges of the, uh, uh, of the government. Uh, these are quarter numbers that were given, and what was written in there is interesting because it says it's the German uh, uh, waiting list uh, as to differentiate it from, let's say, the Polish or Romanian or the Hungarian, uh, which were far lower, by the way. Uh, but we had that, we had to wait, of course, to come to the United States, and time started to catch up with us. Uh, and um, uh, on the next picture, we'll see uh, in 1938, uh, Crystal Knight uh, will, um, uh, these are people in the uh, German concentration camp in, Buch in uh, Sachsenhausen, which is close to Berlin, after they were picked up, and I want to talk about that in detail. <coughs> um, my father was in business for himself. He had uh, uh, been able to uh, become a manufacturer's representative for a variety of um, uh, manufacturers of, uh, of, of agriculture. Uh, and uh, Uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I thought I had turned the telephone off. Uh, anyway, uh, my um, uh, uh, father uh, represented these people. It was hey, in the. Me. I was just checking in. I just was curious how the clippers were looking out for you, or if they weren't quite right. And one of you uh, different. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, but she's, uh, my father was representing the, um, manufacturers in, in agricultural supplies, uh, and my father served the area of the Northeast quadrants of Germany, <coughs> which were uh, the area from which he originated, and he spoke their lingo there. Uh, it was a, quite different from High German. Uh, and um, it, it was a relatively recession-proof business because people had to eat at all times, although, of course, uh, prices for commodity vary quite a bit year to year. At any rate, uh, now uh, comes 1939. Uh, uh, actually, it was before, I'm sorry, not 1939, it was 1935, uh, after Hitler uh, instituted the uh, 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 Nuremberg laws, which really restricted what Jewish activities could be. And uh, at that point, uh, a, about 1935, 1936, a competitor of my father's, my father had difficulty uh, traveling, hotels wouldn't put him up. Uh, and so uh, this competitor uh, uh, approached him whether they should merge their businesses with the suggestion that he would be doing the traveling and my father would do the uh, in, indoor uh, work. And on a handshake, they agreed. This man uh, was a reserve officer from the First World War. He had a similar business, not exactly the same uh, uh, 
uh, obviously not this, he wasn't representing the same companies. Uh, and um, he was also a member of the Nazi party. Uh, we have no idea whether or not it was out of conviction or out of uh, convenience, but at any rate, he turned out to be our savior. Um, and come uh, crystal night at, at uh, November 9th, uh, 1938. Uh, um, uh, the telephone rings at four o'clock in the morning, and this man uh, told my father to uh, get out of the house. Uh, he knew that my grandmother was living by herself. Uh, she was in the process of moving to South Africa, where her son lived, and uh, 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 he said, why don't you go over there? And uh, uh, so at an hour later or so, the, the three of us, I was the only child, uh, the three of us went uh, to my grandmother, and some of the furniture had already been sold, so uh, we had to sleep on the floor. The man had told my father also that he should stay in touch. Uh, we, um, my, my mother and I went back to the apartment uh, a few days later to check on the mail and the concierge uh, said uh, the Gestapo was here looking for Mr. Glazer. And uh, my mother asked him, what did you tell him? And he said, well, I didn't know where you were. So I told him that uh, you probably went to France. And that was the end of the search for Mr. Glazer. Uh, extremely fortunate uh, because if they left an arrest warrant, uh, we would have had, I mean, he would have had to turn himself in. Um, and uh, now uh, he, this man told my father, uh, about uh, <clears throat> a month after uh, uh, Crystal Night, that uh, it's okay. Apparently, the concentration camps were full. They were not picking up any more people. And he um, said, but I do want to sit down with you and talk. And <clears throat> so, uh, he said to my father, they had coffee someplace, um, that uh, I didn't think I'd ever tell you that, but I think you should get out of, out of Germany. Now, that obviously was, uh, he was well tuned into what was going on. Um, this was in uh, January of 39, Hitler marched into Poland in September right at the beginning of September 39. Uh, now, uh, finding the place to go to, that was the next, next problem. Um, we uh, uh, had established, uh, as I said, uh, a relationship with a family in America and had to wait our turn, so the um, American consulate uh, said to my father, well, uh, we'll transfer the, the, uh, your uh, numbers, your, your uh, waiting list numbers, uh, what they call the quarter numbers, uh, to any place in the world uh, where you can wait until they're cut up and then you come to the United States. Uh, so uh, the idea was that we would go someplace for maybe eight months or so at, at the most. Uh, it turned out to be eight years. Uh, <clears throat> so we went to uh, 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 the, my, my parents uh, went to uh, various uh, uh, governmental, I guess they are consulates. Uh, and they were turned down every place. Uh, there was one place in the world um, that you didn't need a visa, you didn't need a passport, you didn't even need money, uh, which was Shanghai. 
Now that's a unique situation. And why was it Shanghai? Because um, Shanghai, of course, was geographically China, but uh, 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 politically it was an international city, uh, guaranteed uh, for its independence uh, by the uh, uh, troops that were stationed there by the British, Americans, uh, French, and Japanese. Uh, each had a sector and they patrolled the sector. The uh, British had the Scotch Highlanders, the Americans had the US Fourth Marines, the French had the enemies from Vietnam, there were soldiers in the French army, uh, and um, the Japanese had, of course, their troops there because they had been fighting the Chinese for a long time. The sector that the Japanese had um, uh, control over was the sector uh, that um, uh, had been in a war with the Chinese uh, in 1937. Uh, if you look at the pictures today of what happened in the Ukraine, uh, that's pretty much what, what the area looked like. Uh, it was uh, near the wharf uh, and a, um, uh, I would say, uh, a relatively large area, uh, but part, most of it was bombed out. So it was really uninhabitable. Uh, the area around the wharf had been built up a little bit. And the reason for it is, of course, they wanted to use the, 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 uh, the wharf for bringing materials and soldiers in. Um, that area was called Honkyu. Uh, and uh, so the question now was, uh, to get transportation to Shanghai. Again, mind you, the idea was we'd be there for six, eight months maybe until we can go to the United States. Uh, and uh, there were four cruise ships uh, that uh, had, uh, uh, they were, they were uh, at two ports in Italy, Trieste and Genoa, that, uh, the ships left from and went to uh, the um, uh, Far East from there. There were also, I think, two uh, American, I'm sorry, two uh, German ships and one Japanese ship that left, all these uh, left from either Hamburg or Bremen in Germany. Uh, somehow, I don't know how my father was able to procure uh, three tickets. Uh, first class for first class cabin on a, on a ship out of Trieste. Uh, and uh, so we left uh, on, in the middle of June and arrived in Shanghai at the height of the uh, uh, summer. Uh, the heat, uh, it, it was quite, quite, Unbear unbearable, really. Um, so let's show the next picture. Uh, <clears throat> now, this is the uh, ship arriving and us coming down the uh, escal the uh, 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 what's it called? <laughs> I forgot. Uh, and it is really almost impossible to. Uh, picture the, the, the bedlam that developed on this pier here uh, where people were waiting. Uh, there were 850 people on board ship. Quite a few of them had relatives that had preceded them uh, because this was toward the tail end of uh, immigration from, from Germany. Germany was in the war almost. Um, and uh, so let's say there were 400 or so relatives there. Uh, then there were the dock workers that uh, were 
taking ha handling the the uh, uh, luggage, uh, and then the police tried. To, quite a few of the policemen were there trying to keep some kind of an order. Uh, and finally, there were the, the customs officials there. I have no idea how many people were there in total, obviously, but I think it must be close to 2,000 people on that, on that one pier. Uh, we found our luggage. Uh, we, were, uh, we had a, a uh, relative waiting for us, my cousin, uh, had, uh, I think, immigrated there either four or six months earlier. And so he was kind of the expert. He knew his way around. And uh, we, uh, 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 after identifying our luggage, uh, got a uh, customs official to take a look at it. He just glanced at it and said, OK, you can go now. And uh, the next step was uh, to find our new abode that my cousin had uh, rented for us. I should add that we arrived in Shanghai with four American dollars a piece. That's all we had, uh, $12 between the th uh, uh, three of us. That was all but was allowed by the German government to, to uh, 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 bring out of the country. So uh, the next, it's very hard to describe what my parents must have felt or see uh, the, the reaction they must have had when they saw the, our new, new uh, I wouldn't call it a residence. It was a room uh, that, uh, a relatively small room, uh, a light bulb hanging from the ceiling, uh, a pink paint uh, that was peeling, three iron bedstands with uh, uh, straw mattresses, uh, a, a washstand, but no water. The water was in the hallway, you had to bring it in and a, uh, a, a toilet. Well, you want to go to the next one? There you go. That's our toilet. Uh, wooden uh, buckets, uh, for one bucket for the three of us, picked up in the morning uh, by a uh, uh, push cart, uh, a man with a push cart and a tank in it. Uh, he cleaned it kind of just, just for seconds, really. Uh, and this manure was used uh, for agriculture, it was sent into the field uh, uh, by boat, really, and uh, probably sold to the farmers. Uh, it, it's just an incredible environment. Furthermore, uh, it was located, uh, the, the house in which the room was, was located along uh, a, a, a block of houses uh, fronting a pier. Uh, so there were houses uh, uh, of prostitution around. There were a lot of bars because the sailors were uh, frequenting this area. Uh, so it was just a horror story. Uh, next morning, I think it was, my cousin came over and said, uh, uh, we'll go downtown to register you. Okay. Uh, now, on the next slide, you'll see uh, here on the left is actually a hotel that was left standing uh, in Desert Sea Honkyu side. Uh, on the right hand side uh, is uh, the, the, the city itself, Shanghai. And you can see it was a very uh, modern city, high-rises, 
banks primarily fronting this river, but even the, the side streets leading away from this street here, which was called the Bund, uh, had large buildings, uh, continental uh, uh, banking was there at the time, I remember. Uh, and uh, I became quite familiar with it many years later, maybe two years later or three, yeah, about that, um, uh, because I found employment in, in that particular area. But anyway, uh, here you can see uh, the uh, uh, guards there and a Chinese having to show his, uh, his identification. They didn't bother us. Uh, <clears throat> when we came into uh, uh, Shanghai proper, my father said, well, this is something different. This, is, this I can get used to, obviously. Uh, the, uh, we went to visit the Jewish agency uh, and uh, here is the uh, registration that I had uh, with them. Uh, <coughs> and uh, Directory of Jewish uh, uh, Refugees. Um, a pleasant surprise uh, was that uh, the man said, uh, your relative in the United States had transmitted uh, a certain amount, I don't remember how much, it wasn't very much, uh, to, uh, for you, and you can pick it up. It mentioned the bank where we could pick it up. Uh, it, it wasn't very much money that he had sent. He was not a rich man, but uh, uh, because the Chinese currency was relatively valueless, it, it was quite a bit of money. I, by comparison. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, with that in hand, my father looked around for a better place to live and he found one still in that Hongqiu area, but uh, away from the wharf. And um, a, it was a, uh, a very nice place, except that it still didn't have a toilet. It did have water, I remember in the room. Uh, it was a one room and there was an atrium in the middle and we were look, overlooking the atrium. So it was a nice place. Um, but, uh, and I should add one thing that when we were at the uh, uh, Jewish agency, uh, they said, let's get this young fellow off the street and we'll put him into uh, uh, the uh, Orton Art School. Uh, which was not far away. It was in the Honkyu area. It wasn't far from where I lived. And, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, it, uh, uh, they enrolled me in a course of, uh, to become an electrical, uh, an electrician essentially. I um, uh, <laughs> I uh, uh, enjoyed that a lot, uh, and uh, <laughs> I uh, was uh, sorry when uh, the next phase in our, our um, uh, life developed. This I, is I, a message I, from Rock. Oh. I'm pushing all kinds of buttons, but nothing is happening here. Um, <clears throat> um, I, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I was very uh, uh, fortunate in, in, in uh, befriending a fellow that turned out to be a friend for life. Uh, and uh, uh, we, by coincidence, had the same girlfriend because he 
uh, met the girl at a school near Berlin and she moved to the, when she moved to Berlin, uh, she went to the same school I went to, uh, small world. Uh, I uh, uh, was uh, quite happy with the arrangements there. I took a public transportation to get to the art school uh, and I, uh, uh, in a way, was sorry when we moved my father. Now, I, uh, there's one uh, additional thing that happened. Uh, a few days later, uh, my father got a message that uh, he should come to the, uh, I think it was Chase Bank uh, in downtown. Uh, there was a trans transmission uh, of funds uh, waiting for us. Well, it turned out to be for my uncle in South Africa. And it was quite a bit more than what my American uncle sent. So uh, with this money, uh, uh, we, uh, my father felt um, that uh, either he'd get into business or he would like to uh, get some better housing. Uh, and a refugee um, real estate agent had contact with a Chinese de developer who told my father that uh, there was uh, new housing uh, uh, built in the French concession, which was really the best part of town, uh, and um, that uh, houses were for long-term leases with a fixed rent uh, and you had to pay a, a key money uh, up front in order to get that lease and my father bought uh, not bought uh, leased a place a seven room house uh, and with the idea of renting six and we would live for rent free and had some left over the house was uh, up to modern standards. It had a bathtub, it had a, a kitchen, two kitchens actually, uh, and it had um, uh, flush toilets. So uh, uh, we moved there. My father was able to get uh, six uh, immigrants that uh, moved in there. So we were at the moment sitting pretty uh, and but it was located far from art school so i had to drop art school uh, my friend also had uh, relatives in the, the international settlement i think it was the british sector and um, they uh, uh, he moved with his uh, parents there too, and we stayed in touch, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, uh, really, uh, it was a nice environment in which we lived now. Uh, it was really a par with what you would find in uh, France, let's say. Uh, <clears throat> but I had now to look for jobs. And I found a job with a uh, water processing company. Uh, and then uh, later on, I found a job as a uh, uh, apprentice in a necktie manufacturing. Uh, and finally, uh, I uh, <coughs> was approached, and this was just a coincidence really, uh, by a um, Swiss company um, who I had contact with, the, the owner of that company, uh, when I was with the uh, um, <coughs> uh, water processing company. And uh, I started there as an apprentice and I was employed there until we left uh, Shanghai. So I was extremely fortunate. Now, um, in, in 1941, uh, you want to show the next slide, uh, the uh, Japanese took over 
uh, and uh, on the right hand side it shows the ghetto area now uh, <clears throat> i have to explain how this originated uh, the germans uh, <clears throat> first of all we were about uh, 18 to 20,000 Jews uh, in uh, Shanghai altogether. <clears throat> and the Japanese didn't really know what to do with us, um, but the Germans did. Uh, the uh, Gestapo sent a guy by the name of, he was, uh, I think, Joseph, uh, Kern, Colonel Mo Joseph Meisinger who was a butcher of, of um, uh, Warsaw. And they transferred him to Tokyo uh, to achieve the same thing with the uh, uh, immigrants in Shanghai. <clears throat> None of this we knew, this all came out after the war. He came up with all kinds of uh, uh, schemes that he proposed to, to the uh, Japanese, including that they would established, the Germans would establish gas chambers to get rid of us, and the Japanese wanted no part of any of this. Uh, but finally, uh, uh, they, they agreed on putting us around the wharf area, and uh, next to the wharf area was uh, uh, where uh, the waterworks and the gas works and the electric company uh, so it was really uh, an important area uh, and uh, they decided to create a ghetto around there. The ghetto was about a mile, a square mile, that's all. And it was totally surrounded by barbed wire with, I think, one or two exits. <clears throat> uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, well, this is where we First, well, okay. Uh, this is uh, not the place that we originally lived in, but point was that um, uh, I'm trying to think of the, the the name they were giving us. It was stateless um, immigrants, uh, where. Uh, uh, had to move within, I think it was a month or two, if they lived outside the area of, of the ghetto, uh, had to move into the ghetto um, within uh, that period. Uh, and uh, the area was not called a ghetto, it was called a designated area. So uh, stateless refugees, uh, moving into a designated area by by orders uh, this is the one that uh, my pals uh, were uh, uh, able to, to trade our place in the french concession with a chinese man uh, who had a house with seven rooms and years later i I visited this place with my wife uh, and to show her where we were, that we were the second uh, door. Uh, <clears throat> so I altogether, um, uh, we had uh, a difficult time from a standpoint of uh, health, uh, but not from from the financial end we we managed to go through uh, i can't go into detail of the kind of work i was doing for the swiss company one other point that i'd like to make is that we had to uh, obtain if anybody wanted to uh, 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 leave the area he had to prove either that he was employed uh, or that he had some kind of emergency outside the area that he needed to go to, like the hospital, for instance, although there was a small hospital inside that area. Um, and uh, uh, in order to get the permission, we had to, you want to show the next slide? 
uh, see Mr. Goya, who was running the, the, the ghetto. Uh, <coughs> and he was a, uh, a, a essentially a nut, uh, almost unpredictable as to what he would do. He hated tall people. Uh, he uh, uh, would pe pe uh, uh, beat people up on, for no good reason. People had to wait in line, as you can see on the left here, uh, for hours on end. Uh, and if when you had your permission, I had a three months passport because passed because I uh, worked for a neutral company in Swiss company. Uh, but uh, uh, you had to be back at a certain time. You had to go a certain way. Uh, to where you wanted to go or uh, where you worked. Uh, and uh, it was uh, a really uh, a horrendous experience for some of the people that didn't have a permanent employment outside of the ghetto. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, the war was over. Uh, for a very short time, there was a fight uh, between the Chinese communists who were in the countryside, we found out, uh, had an inkling already that uh, the peace had broken out because we were living in uh, 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 an area that was not far from the military airport. And we were told by a Chinese neighbor that um, we, uh, he observed uh, that the, at night the lights were on at the airport. So you know, that would make no sense in doing wartime. Uh, and then we were uh, uh, liberated by the Americans. Uh, now we uh, had one, we had our quota numbers called up. We came, uh, we, this time we came to the United States on a uh, troop transport and uh, not a first class cabin. Uh, it had uh, bunk beds all over uh, and uh, the, the, the women at one end of the, I think it was the front end of the ship and we were men on the other end of the ship. But it got us to the promised land. And uh, we came, uh, we arrived uh, in San Francisco, uh, I uh, was able to, by coincidence, uh, I ran into a uh, classmate of mine from Berlin who had married. She had come to the States in, in 38. Uh, and when they found out that I had been working as a, a necktie in a necktie business, uh, they, uh, she, her husband said, uh, my sister is working for a company where that can give you employment. Uh, in uh, so I uh, had an appointment on the following week uh, to uh, beat the man that was the uh, the uh, union uh, supervisor in in a ladies garment workers a uh, ladies garment. Uh, factory. I worked there, uh, was good, good pay. The, uh, and one thing that we did right when we came here was to apply for American citizenship because it took five years to get it. Uh, but uh, about uh, maybe uh, a month later, I uh, got greetings from the president. Uh, show up for a physical and you are a uh, uh, and I was a 1A draft eligible. Now having spent eight years in Shanghai uh, wasted uh, <clears throat> and uh, now another two years in the army uh, I didn't really uh, send me and I <clears throat> decided I heard that you can uh, stay out uh, if you go to school, it's just deferred. And I started 
uh, going to San Francisco City College, which was free at the time. And in the afternoons, I was working as a shipping clerk. Um, and uh, two years later, uh, I had my AA degree. I transferred to the University of California at Davis to study uh, um, food science. Uh, why food science? Because I was plenty hungry in Shanghai. Uh, I had seen a, a United Nations Food and Agriculture, and the work they do, and I wanted to join them. And also, uh, I uh, uh, knew that the program entailed a number of different areas like bacteriology, uh, uh, food engineering, uh, that led into different other areas if from an employment standpoint. I worked in the after, at, I worked uh, part time in the cafeteria uh, for my meals. I worked in Sacramento at a dairy uh, and uh, I, uh, I was doing fine. Summers I worked in dairies, I had a union job. Uh, I um, uh, actually saved a little money. Then uh, I uh, came out of, uh, I, I got my bachelor's degree uh, in uh, uh, 1953. And I <coughs> um, uh, was told by uh, my advisor uh, that uh, I should, uh, there's a little bit of story behind it. It's in the book, but I'm not, Gotta go into it. Haven't got the time, uh, and I uh, um, went to uh, uh, Stanford Business School uh, to get an MBA. Uh, with an MBA, I uh, got employment in Chicago, uh, and here is a graduation under proud parents uh, uh, at Stanford. I. Uh, <coughs> In Chicago, I uh, started as a management trainee with Continental Can Company. I uh, traded a number of other companies. Uh, and then I uh, 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 really came back to California, as, as uh, Sydney said, uh, uh, I became ultimately president of of a subsidiary of uh, Smith Klein, um, and um, I want to spend just a minute or two uh, on uh, the uh, Jewish involvement that I had because I feel very strongly about this. Being a refugee, uh, I've noticed. First of all, being a German Jew. Uh, uh, was not a, being Jewish was not a bargain, uh, but uh, uh, as we left Germany, uh, it was one Jewish agency after another, all the way on your, our trip to America that was reaching out, uh, and I felt uh, an obligation really to get involved in immigrants. First, it was. Uh, uh, with a temple that uh, my wife and I joined, uh, that uh, we uh, uh, settled uh, Vietnamese boat people, then a Russian couple with a seven-year-old son. I'm still friends with the family. That was 40 years ago. Uh, and um, uh, then that got me involved with the Federation, and the Federation uh, uh, again, fundraising for various immigrant, like for instance, the Ethiopian Jewry uh, or the Russian Jews. So it, it, it was uh, a very satisfying experience for me to kind of get, be able to get back. I saved the best for last, uh, my wife. Um, I, um, uh, met her on a blind date in Chicago. Um, we hit it off in the beginning. We had a little tiff uh, and then we got back together again and stayed together for the next almost 60 years. Uh, <clears throat> we had two great boys. 
we had two great boys. Uh, unfortunately, and, and I have three grandchildren, two in college, uh, and unfortunately, uh, uh, my wife uh, passed away uh, almost six years ago, and I'm still uh, not quite over it. Uh, she, we were the two opposites that attracted each other. Uh, uh, I, she was a night person, I was a morning person. She liked to read on the couch with a book. I uh, get gespiltes when I'm uh, uh, sitting for too long. Uh, yet we hit it off very well. Uh, we had similarities. She came from a very poor background. I came from a very poor background. Uh, and there were many other, there were similarities. Uh, <clears throat> it was a great marriage. Uh, we loved to travel uh, and see the world, and we did. And uh, <clears throat> uh, as you can see, I'm still quite emotional about it. Uh, and I'd be glad to answer questions. Thank you so much, Ernie. Um, so we have had a few questions come in. I have to do one thing. I have to apologize sure. for, for, for this telephone. It really no got worries me off at track. All. <laughs> no, but it got me off track. <laughs> no worries at all. Um, so one of the questions that we had, um, what, were there any formal places of worship when you were in Shanghai? And were you able to practice Judaism and celebrate Jewish holidays while you were there? Uh, there was, a, I think it was called Moshe or, or Hell or something like that. Uh, I was bar mitzvahed. Uh, and quite religious for a year. And then I kind of drifted away from it only to come back to it after I came uh, to the States and be married and joined the temple and uh, been involved Jewishly all the time. <clears throat> okay. Also, um, let's, oops. Okay, hold on. Let's see what else we have. Um, did you ever go back to Shanghai? I know you mentioned yes. that you went on a cruise yes. with your wife. Yes, yes, I did. Uh, the bucket picture and the uh, where we lived in the ghetto, those two pictures I took uh, when we were uh, on a two-day visit to Shanghai. It was on a part of a cruise. They stopped there for two days. And along the same lines, have you ever been back to Berlin or, or Germany in general? To visit? Well, that's an interesting question. Yes, I have been many times. Uh, but the first time I went over there, I was actually there on business, uh, visiting uh, uh, Holland, uh, Sweden, uh, not Sweden, Switzerland, Switzerland and Germany. I spoke to, uh, German in Holland and in Switzerland, but I couldn't get myself to speak German in Germany. Uh, I've been there since then because um, uh, being in the food business, uh, there are, it's, it's the largest uh, international food show uh, every other year in, in Cologne. So I attended that and I went back to Berlin uh, uh, at, on one occasion, uh, it was there on a Sunday, and uh, I thought I'd go out and look at my school, uh, where I went to school, and uh, it was the Free University of Berlin, and the next time I sh wanted to show somebody where I had went, gone to school, it became the uh, um, embassy of uh, uh, Bahrain, I think it was one of the Arab countries, which is kind of funny. Um, can you also give a little bit more detail about how um, the Japanese authorities were able to round up Jews to put them in a ghetto, um, since it seems like you were all living in different areas of the city? Well, 
the whole city was was uh, occupied by the Japanese. Uh, nobody brought us there. We had to go or else we were uh, in jail. Uh, so I, we, I think my father had a deferment for a month or something like that until he could arrange for uh, a, the trade with the Chinese. Uh, uh, but there was, uh, for what I remember, no urgency. <clears throat> I mean, no, no urging by, on the part of uh, the Japanese. Right. Um, so I know you've also mentioned Ukraine a, a couple of times during the program, um, but sort of with your own experience as a refugee, what, what, are, you, what are your thoughts on what's happening in Ukraine now? Um, and is it sort of bringing back any memories of, of what, what you had to go through? It brings back a lot of memory. One thing I didn't mention is the health of the refugees was very poor because of poor nutrition. And the uh, environment uh, was just horrible with oriental diseases. Uh, <clears throat> this was before antibiotics. Uh, and <clears throat> I've read that uh, one in 10 did not survive. So that was a combination of, of illness and bombing. So in many ways, I think there is a similarity to the Ukrainian situation from a human standpoint, as well as from a uh, 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 standpoint of bombings of buildings. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it, it, was, it, it was and that is a horror story. And then I know we're getting towards the end of the hour. Sure. So I would uh, like to just end by asking you what you hope people take from listening to your story and, and what you hope people will sort of take into the future and, and learn from your own experiences. Well, uh, what there's a German saying, uh, what you have between your ears is what is important. Uh, you can be a rich man today and a poor man tomorrow. Uh, but what you know, they can't take away from you. And that turned out to be true. Uh, I could see it in Shanghai. People who had a good education uh, had generally a better attitude toward the uh, misery, although some did not, were not able to cope with it and committed suicide. Uh, there were quite a few suicides. <clears throat> but generally speaking, uh, for instance, the art school I went to was staffed by people who were engineers and just uh, uh, wanted to be uh, useful. There were lectures at night uh, by some of the people who used to be professors in Germany or Austria, uh, but uh, uh, people who uh, had really a poor education had difficulty coping. Well, I'd like there to thank some, you so much. I should oh. say there were some positive aspects in retrospect. Uh, mm -hmm. You developed sort of a different kind of a, a psyche, having gone through this. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you develop sharp elbows, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, it is very interesting that the people that I've run into, like the Russian couple, uh, have been very successful in this country. Uh, uh, adversity does have some benefits. Uh, you, you learn to cope. Well, thank you so much, Ernie, for sharing your story with us today. Um, and I have personally learned so much from listening to you. And I, I know we have a lot of people on the program who also have learned a lot. And I know we also have one, at least one class who's listening to you, which is very exciting. Well, uh, I, I wrote the book for my grandchildren, 
but friends have told me this needs to be published. And so I feel, uh, to me, it isn't the, uh, the, the royalties, it's, but I, I want the story to be told. And I go into quite a bit of more detail uh, in the book, obviously. I'm not under mm -hmm. time constraints. <laughs> and I, I have to apologize about the telephone. That was terrible. <clears throat> oh, no worries at all. Um, and uh, the name of the book is A Life Well Lived. Um, and in the follow-up email to this uh, program, I will send out the link of where you can buy that book. Um, right. And I also, so I'd like to thank you again, Ernie, for joining us today. And I would like to thank Shanghai Arc for co-presenting today's program. Um, everything we do at the museum is made possible through donor support. Um, so to those of you watching, we hope you'll consider making a donation to support uh, the museum or becoming a member and also joining us for our upcoming programs, which you can check out at the link that I am putting in the Zoom chat right now. Also, um, on March 31st, uh, we will be hosting our annual fundraiser, the Spring Women's Luncheon, which will be featuring testimony from Dr. Edith Eva Eager, who is a survivor of Auschwitz, who will be in concentration in conversation, excuse me, with Sarah Maslin Meir, a New York Times reporter, and 2G. Um, so we hope that you can join us there. Um, and that information is also found on our website. I'd like to thank you so much again, Ernie. This has been such a pleasure. Um, and uh, thank you all again to all of you out there. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>